Here we go again with Jaguar Wright. Down at the hotel this time. Jaguar Wright trying to scam extended state out of a extended state. She homeless. That's what I got out of it. Why would you leave your old residence knowing your new residence is not ready? Clearly, she's homeless. It appeared to me she was the aggressor. First, she said the lady was a Mary J. Blige fan. Then she claimed it was about a cart. If your husband is not only your husband, but your security, why are you claiming you got to leave your hotel room at 3 a.m. in the morning and get a cot? Lies. There was a better way to handle that situation. Why she filmed it and uploaded it to social media? Because she's a attention addict. She being a pick me sent out. Because her audience put a battery in her back, got her out here thinking she got some power. She ain't got no power. At one point in the video, she tried to make it a race thing. I didn't get that. Y'all notice how when people call the police on her, she starts yelling in the background, help me, help me. She got a gun. I fear for my life. She did the same thing on Facebook with her son's grandmother. Sad. She's so sad. She pathetic. Jaguar Wright is very problematic. She's a liar and also a scammer and a manipulator. And for her to make fun of Foxy Brown's disability, is disgusting. She claims the hotel is nasty. And then she turned around and said the hotel honors customer service. And then in the same breath, she claimed the hotel has drug addicts and prostitutes. Which one is it? All I got out of that video is her being very problematic. Hello? Should we just call corporate? Maybe you should get on the phone. Let's call corporate right now. Oh, you just had all that mouth while I had my earbuds in, but I take them out and I'm paying you full attention. And um, you got a problem with what? Oh, you quiet now. This is not professional. I am a paying customer. I want to speak to the manager or we can call corporate. Great. Now, now come and talk to me. Tell me what you just had to say before I took my earbuds out. I said because of your yelling. What yelling? I came in here. Hello? Call the police. Please call the police because harassment is a real charge. And what you're doing right now to me is harassment. You done lied and said that I did something that I didn't do. I am a paying customer and your entire staff is inept. Yes, please, police, please hurry up and come. Oh my God, she got a gun. Please come, hurry up. I don't feel safe. Please, she got a gun. Yes, please. Please come right now. She's trying to set me up. She's trying to set me up. No, I'm not yelling for no reason. You've been harassing me. You've been harassing me. That's what you've done. Come on, Boop. Get on camera. This should please. So I just wanted to jump on right quick to say something about the last video that I posted from Extended Stay America. 
See, sometimes I just put things out to see what people will say. I don't frame them or, or try to give you context so you can see it from my point of view, which is why I document everything the way that I do. But please trust and believe if I release something. Who this? Who this? Let me see. Who this? Who this is? But we'll see. I'm going live with someone that I don't know. Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? Oh, I guess they went off. I guess they didn't want to go live. I don't know. I, sometimes I be pushing the wrong button. Sometimes I don't know. What's going on here? All right, I gotta get I gotta get my little power station together. So um, yeah. Y'all think it's easy doing what I'm doing? Like it's not easy. It's not easy being an instrument of change. I spend about, I don't know, an hour a day blocking, reporting accounts now, because clearly I so I got to get a whole social media team to do this, because I don't know how people like Talib have time to sit around and create fake ghost pages just to antagonize people because they don't want anyone to see them doing it. See, that's why I don't do that. I want people to know that I'm talking about them. I want people to hear me saying it. I want people to hear me doing it. I don't want anyone to be confused at the fact that I am not afraid to say whatever I gotta say to whoever I gotta say it to and if they got a problem with it they can come say it to my face. I'm loud, I'm obnoxious, I'm this, I'm that. There's a lot of loud obnoxious people. Rodney Dangerfield was loud and obnoxious and he was a millionaire and a very successful comedian. Um, <clears throat> Who else? See, if I were a comedian everything that I'm doing and saying would be okay but who say that I'm not the Who's to say that I'm not a great comedic writer? Like I said, half of the things that I'm saying about some of these A-listers, if 50 Cent was saying them, nobody would have a problem with it. 50 say whatever he want to say. Curtis, Curtis say whatever he wants to say. And everybody true. Why? Because he took some bullets. And he's tough. Guess what? I took a bullet too. And so what? Like 50 Cent, the only nigga that been shot. Like... So you gotta be shot to, to pop fly? Do I gotta show y'all all my scars and all my bruises from every time I was cut and stabbed so it can be okay for me to be myself? But what I'm not gonna tolerate is black people treating other black people unfairly with disrespecting them because the truth is we can't expect anything from white America until we're willing to do it amongst ourselves. How are we ever going to expect white America to respect us when we don't respect ourselves? The reason why I filmed that entire exchange is because the entire time that I was there, while the storm interviews were getting views and all of that, and I was talking actively about Mary J. Blige, that chick had an attitude with me from day one. I got to walk through the, uh, the halls of the uh, hotel looking for a cart because... Nobody bothered to put things back, but then when I come down and I speak to the Mexican woman and she comes out of the office and there's a cloud of smoke coming behind her and it smells like meth or crack or something, and she was back there getting high and I was waiting at the front desk at 3 a.m. in the morning for what, 10 minutes before she finally came out? And that was after I rang the phone at the front desk, standing at the front desk for about, yeah, 8 to 10 minutes, and then told me she couldn't leave. She couldn't get the car. She couldn't find the car. That I had to wander through the hotel at night, a woman by myself. Anybody could be in that elevator at night. If you don't want to have to go looking for things in the middle of the night, why didn't you do your job and make sure that the carts was in the place they needed to be for the people that were checking in very late, like my husband and myself? See, we've gotten so used to incompetence in the African-American, and just people of color, period. We've gotten so used to being incompetent with one another that we constantly just expect people to let us make it. See, everybody's so busy minding their business that ain't nobody talking the truth. Truth is, a lot of these extended stays in Dallas, there's a lot of drug addicts and prostitutes that hang out at these places. Now, see, me, I like to stay in certain places because I don't eat at every restaurant. My husband and I have a very strict diet. We cook every day. So I need to be in a place with a kitchen. My husband's also military. So we stay in places that honor 
like to stay in places where we actually have a say and who can run up on us or who can't run up on us. Now, all that being said, if I come to an establishment looking for refuge while I'm waiting for my new home to be ready, and I'm spending all of this money, why can't I go down into the lobby and get the car to go out to my car and get my things? So I can be able to cook breakfast when I wake up in the morning for my husband like I do every day. That's what I'm paying for. Well, I don't have the right to ask for that. I don't have the right to ask that people that are supposed to be being paid to do a job, do their job. But I'm for my car to get banged up. The reason why I turned the camera on when I did was because I had my earbuds in when I walked in and she, I thought I heard her say, are you guys checking out tonight? And I said, well, you know, we're not sure when we're going to be getting the keys for our new place, you know, so I'll let you know, you know, before checkout time. She said, oh, no, you checking out. And that's when I was like, oh, wait a minute, did she just pop fly? So I took my earbuds out and I said, I'm sorry, do we have a problem? Yeah, you checking out tonight. You, you think you special? You talking shit about Mary J. Blige? You checking out tonight. Oh, she got real. Thickums got real, um, uh, she got real serious about Mary J. Blige. And I said, well, bitch, I got a Mary J. Blige song for you. I'm not going to cry because you need to be singing that song after I get your ass fired. But don't be mad because UPS is hiring, ho. Your job isn't to worry about Mary J. Blige's reputation. It's to worry about the guests who are paying money to stay there so you can have a job during the COVID. Like I told her in the rest of the video, which I might post later. I hope you got a, I hope you got something else lined up. Because it's a big mistake that you're making. She's got employees. She's supposed to be the general manager. She got employees there getting high at night, tricking off at night, letting prostitutes come in through the night. They do it down in Commonwealth, too. We got to stop pretending like we don't see wrong. And like I said in the rest of that video, I'm filming this for your protection as well as mine. See, I didn't show y'all the rest of the video when the cops came. And as you can see in the beginning of the video, I said, 